Well, we ain't got nowhere else to go, so we're going back to the Valley of Repose. Heck yeah. Bring that salt meter back down to like a one. Ooh, and we're already seeing some stuff to harvest. Heck yeah. <laughs> Never mind, the ship's talking to us. Back up to a four. Good morning, workers. Ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? Oh, hell yeah. That's literally this whole game. <gasps> Capitalism! <clears throat> the Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What a lazy creatures! Yes, God, God forbid anybody gets a damn break around here. Oh, shit. No wonder they lack survival skills. Stand beneath the onion and press ah! to call them out. Alrighty, here we go. And now we are officially timed. The game has well and truly begun. That pellet posy has not sprouted yet. Louie, you stay here while we go survey the area. Punch the flower. How many Pikmin do we need for this? 35. Okay, so that's our minimum goal. I don't remember if the pellet posies respawn in this direction. Oh, they do. We already have 36 Pikmin total in the field. Like I said, I'm gonna be hoarding and collecting all the things I can. Y'all know me, any game with an inventory system or collection system of any kind, I'm a heckin' hoarder. In theory, we really just need at most 100 of each type of Pikmin. I'm still gonna collect all the bodies and sprout as many as I can, cause I wanna. I have no logical reason to want to do more than I need to. It just makes me happy. All right, Louie is in the base. Let's go ahead and collect all these. Then we'll meet up with Olimar with the rest of our numbers. It also takes a shorter amount of time for the Pikmin to sprout, which I also like and appreciate. Let's go ahead and get our Pikmin up here. Uh, you can see we got some enemies waiting for us. There we go. Got the little baby here. These are easy, easy to deal with. And then we have the big mama. I am paranoid. We probably could take down that sleeping bulb orb with the Pikmin that we have. I would rather not restart the day. So I'd like to have as many Pikmin as possible to go take on that enemy. Increasing our troops for more efficient murder of the local fauna. We're just commanding an army of sentient yet mindless creatures to attack larger creatures. This is fine. This is absolutely fine. Okay, so in the first game, I know the best strategy for attacking the sleeping bulb orbs was to rush at them from behind. I don't know if that's still the case here. We might actually do better just throwing a spamming chicken on its back, possibly. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank goodness it did the shake animation instead of biting. Here's another treasure. We need 35 for this. For this dinky little cam. All right, grab a few off of there. Thank you. And then we'll get a bunch on this pellet there. Whee! I hope nobody gets motion sick. Oh, well, I'll get motion sick. Oh no, I should probably stop that. Here we go. Ew. I like how they rush to where we are, but for some reason we aren't seen in the screen. A her scrap. Somehow worth actually a good chunk of money. All right, we want to bring as many Pikmin as we can with us because I didn't point it out, but we do have a wall to knock down. So we're gonna need as many of our numbers as we can bring with us. Because we want to get that wall down as quickly as possible. 70 Pikmin already, holy moly. You're never really at a huge risk of running out of Pikmin. There are definitely some 
balancing issues. Like, I know a lot of people have their issues with Pikmin 2, which is fair and valid. But for me personally, this is my favorite of the Pikmin series, at least so far. Because like I said, I have yet to play Pikmin 3. We will do that after this game. We aren't on a day limit. Like in the first game, we have 30 days to repair the ship and take off before Olimar suffocates and runs out of air, basically. We don't really have a time limit in the game overall. We have a time limit within the day, but not... We can collect treasure for as long as we want, basically. How could Pikmin destroy such a massive wall when mass their might is ferocious? Louis, did Olimar instruct you on proper Pikmin commanding protocol? We've been over this. Please! Oh, uh, salt meter's gotta go back up. It's gotta go back up. Every time it goes down, it's gotta go back up, because the ship won't stop talking to me. But anyways, yeah, so the lack of time limits, it helps reduce my anxiety quite a bit. So I won't say no to that. Interesting, warm air is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both show expressions of unease. Do not fear, the leader's group of Pikmin will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod too. Damn it, just can't catch a break from this ship. <laughs> Approach the hole and press <gasps> ah! to jump in. And we finally have our first cave. Why do I have Louie in charge? Get Olimar in charge. VOG, Emergence Cave. Enter this hole with your Pikmin squad? Yes. So this was another thing that people didn't really like about this game because it kind of turned a real-time strategy game into not a real-time strategy game because time is paused while we're in here. Which again, I don't personally hate, but I understand why people do. Oh dear. Intriguing. My heat sensors indicate that this hole's interior is warmer than on the surface. Ooh. A warm hole, you say? Uh, uh. Nope, nope. Stop talking. Go to jail. I'm sorry, but really not. Analysis suggests subterranean areas may support different life forms than the surface. That's your hint that we're gonna see different enemies in these caves that we don't see in the overworld. If you wish to check underground terrain, press start pause to communicate with me. Why would I ever want to communicate with you? I am not just a ship, I am an all purpose support pod. I think this ship just loves to hear itself talk. Got another bottle cap here. You can see there's a new type of bulb orb. We don't have to. We could probably kill them with the Pikmin. But just because we can. Let's go punch them to death. A 7-up bottle cap. Another bottle cap worth 100 pokos. Quenching emblem. So we could definitely, most likely, kill these bulb orbs unscathed. But let's go punch them to death. Because we can. And why not? The captains can take a whole bunch of hits. Th those little green circles there are their health meters. But like I said, I am definitely going to be making use of this feature a lot. And the strongest of the Pikmin, which we will be discovering here shortly. Is it absolutely unoriginal and kind of a cop-out? Yeah. Do I care? Absolutely fucking not. I'm here to have a good time. I'm not here to break the wheel, do something never before seen. If that ain't your thing and you don't want to watch that, then maybe this playthrough just didn't for you. That's fine. This hole appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate a more treacherous terrain ahead. I don't know what the hell I'm doing to this ship, boy. I'm not gonna lie. Louie, do you recall that you can just adjust the camera with literally an er and z, correct? 
Your expression suggests you do. Excellent. Then approach the hole and press ah, to enter it. Thank you, ship. We do have one more treasure. But you see, the Pikmin are also carrying the corpses back to the ship. Curious. Because we don't have access to the onion from down here. Hmm. Zerk, how can you possibly consider this beast a treasure? Beasts are incompatible with my circuitry. I suppose I will store your finds in my hold. But I do not think beasts will be worth much. So we can claim the corpses of our slain foes for just a few pokos each. You'll see. Yeah, we get like two pokos per corpse there. Obviously different enemies are worth different amounts. But I think the highest any particular enemy is worth is like maybe 15. And that's like a huge boss or something, so. We likely will be collecting bodies and stuff. As I said, because y'all know I'm a hoarder. I'm a collector. We got the citrus lump. Y'all hear that sound? That is very important to listen for. Because that sound indicates that there is no remaining treasure left on this particular cave floor. We will get better indicators of treasure and their whereabouts and those sorts of things. But until then, we're going to need to listen for that sound when we're in the caves. <laughs> Emergence Cave Sub Level 2. Final floor! It's not very dramatic in this instance, but in most final floors, we'll be fighting the boss. Okay, we got two thingies here. We can take them on easy with the Pikmin. Dwarf Bulborbs, if you get a direct hit, then it should be an instant kill. Let's go ahead and take them back. Oh, look! is a globe! Da -da 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 -da. It's inconceivable that such an immense object has been buried here for so long. The design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. It's never directly confirmed, but it very, very heavily implies that we are in some kind of like post-apocalyptic Earth sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, really, I can see my house from here. Perhaps this can be used for something other than salvage? Mm. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even 100 red Pikmin will be unable to lift it. And indeed the ship is correct. We need 101 Pikmin. However... As we saw in the first game, only 100 Pikmin total can be on the field at one time. So however will we get enough Pikmin to be able to lift it? Woo! Okay, I was a little bit careless there. Cause you heard the little yelp from the Pikmin. There are certain enemies where even if an enemy chomps onto a Pikmin, you have like a second or two, and if you can kill it fast enough, you can save your Pikmin. That was a little bit too close for comfort so early in the game. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take Louie and punch these ones to death. In the first game, when we were in the overworld, we could go up to the ship to restore health. I think for some reason they removed that feature in this game. I don't remember off the top of my head. And we're back to the tripping Pikmin, could you not? That resulted in a very tragic death in the first game. Y'all need to keep up, damn. What is this? 
this? Oh my goodness! Look at these purple flowers! Wow! Astounding! A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape! Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. I don't know, they look pretty normal to me. Well, we gotta throw Pikmin into the flowers. We shall do that. <gasps> look at that. We're limited to five per flower. It's time. Look at this, so cute! I'm a simple person, okay? I like cute and adorable things. Amazing, a purple Pikmin. It has hair and is quite stocky. It seems very heavy and strong. This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Hell yeah. Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into flowers? Intriguing. Perhaps there are others? Just for the purple Pikmin alone, salt meter's gonna come back down to one. We are very under-seasoned right now. I love me some purple Pikmin. And dear God, are they broken in this game. I'ma abuse the shit out of them. Which again, might be considered a cop-out. I don't care. And also, they implemented a feature in this game that dear God, I wish so desperately was in the first one. When you grab and hold a Pikmin, you can Swap the type that you're holding! <gasps> oh my god. You can even swap for flowers if we want to, but we don't have any flower pigment right now. Now, the beauty about the purples, even though they're very excessively slow, not only are they... They're very strong. They have the carry strength of 10 Pikmin, which is hella convenient. Hence why they made this freaking globe for some reason 101 pikmin because they really wanted to just rub it in as i mentioned though they are exceptionally slow i guess that's like the one downside that purple pikmin have they're slow come on everybody get on there assist there we go oh it's a special treasure Spherical Atlas. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside this sphere, retrieving data. Error, I could only decode a portion of the data because it is, it is half a globe. Will we find the other half somewhere else? Hmm. But I did retrieve new geographic charts. I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the Sphere Chart. Press start pause to contact me and access the exploration kit on the radar screen with Lily. Now that we have this new data, you should explore the decoded territory tomorrow. New area, yay! It's kind of like the Forest of Hope for uh, the first game. We can technically come back to the Valley of Repose the next in-game day, and also there is that noise that there's no more treasure remaining. But there isn't really anything else we can do in the Valley of Repose at this point in time. So we go move on. Oh my god. The purples are so slow. They're so damn slow. But they're so cute! Look at them! They're so cute! I love them! I will guard them with my life! Astounding! The water is shooting out of this geyser with incredible force! 
The sensors indicate it has enough power to launch you into the air. Approach it and press ah, to try. Oh, this is our exit. Long-winded way to say this is our exit. Escape to the surface with your Pikmin. Hell yeah! Oh boy, we got a whole bunch of money. Zero deaths. Cave complete! Heck yeah. It's gonna get a hell of a lot worse from here. Mmm. Oh my god, ship. Please. Please. And you have successfully returned to the planet's surface. Excellent decision making, gentlemen. Oh, we must celebrate your first successful spelunking expedition. You've gathered a large amount of data that needs in depth analysis. I shall send a report back to the president tonight detailing your progress. And it's still not done! Okay, so you just gotta go up. Back up. We're at a six now. Olimar and Louis, since you will explore a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. Oh, why do you still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize it, but you are exhausted. You should take a much needed rest as you, as you have all the time you need to collect treasure. Yep, we're not on a time limit. We're limited in how much time we have in the day, but not how many days we can spend here. Haste makes waste, so take it slow and steady. Also, you know, like I said, we literally can't do anything else today. We gotta discover more types of Pikmin to proceed throughout the area. And the purple Pikmin go inside the ship. We'll kind of gloss over that a little bit. Heck yeah, we're doing so good. We have almost a whole tenth of the debt paid off. Wow. Today's report. Money, 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 and more money. That's literally almost a tenth of the debt already paid off. Lots of Pikmin sprouted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very nice. Mail time. Baby steps first, Solomar. Plan well and don't worry about me. Our debt is with happy Hokutate savings and loan after all. Besides, there's nothing left to repossess. So ha! That's 